It's interesting watching everything you've ever known and loved go down in flames. You could stuff spaghetti into a cannon, fire it, and the resulting splatter would reflect both the long reach of terrible writers with equally terrible ideas and all of the franchises or intellectual properties people have chosen to defile. Just about every major popular series you can think of has been run into the ground or will continue to be ruined without shame. This has been going on for almost a decade now, often contributed to the oddity of 2015 when Star Wars, Jurassic Park and Terminator all received sequels that would kick off new stories and bring with them a tidal wave of nostalgia like transporting you back to your childhood. Lightsabers, dinosaurs, and Arnold's stick-up-his-ass performance got us into the theaters and we guzzled those movies and others down like a desperate housewife on Tinder. Well, reap as we have sown, I suppose, because these continuations have failed with all the grace of an Olympic diver missing the pool as we have reached yet another conclusion with Jurassic World Dominion. Four years have passed since the dinosaurs were released from the Lockwood Mansion and became part of the world's various ecosystems. The Mosasaur tipped boats like cows, pterosaurs shit on statues and cities forcing pigeons to unionize, and genetically altered foot-long locusts are destroying whole fields of crops across entire nations on biblical scale. The world has spiraled out of control, and a new genetics company has stepped up to the plate to save the world. Biosyn. Finally making their proper debut in the film franchise, led by returning villain Lewis Dodgson, Biosyn rose to prominence in a very short time. Their accolades are extensive, with capture and relocation of numerous dinosaurs to their sanctuary, and their extensive agriculture with new crops which are locust-proof. Have no fear, though, as Ellie Sattler is on the case. Returning to the series, Sattler is investigating these super locusts and has a man on the inside of Biosyn. Ian Malcolm. However, these two are not enough to convince the world, so the plot, sorry, Sattler, brings Dr. Alan Grant to join her investigation of Biosyn. At the same time, Owen, Claire, and Clone Girl are living a secluded life in the wilderness of Nevada when Blue pops up out of the woods with a baby later named Beta. Well, not for long, when both Beta and Clone Girl are kidnapped by mercenaries working for Biosyn. Now Owen and Claire start globetrotting until they also reach Biosyn, crossing paths with the old cast and must work together to take them down from the inside. And if you're wondering, yes, the dinosaurs are a bit of an afterthought. You can only repeat an idea so many times before even the most diehard fans want something different, so bugs it is. Oh, but we also have dinosaurs and new ones not seen before. <sighs> See, I took the time to look up InGen's list because I distinctly remember half the dinosaurs in this movie not being on there. So, you wouldn't have happened to make dinosaurs pop up out of nowhere like an unwanted relative, have you? Because I find it really odd that Dimetrodon, Giganotosaurus, Atrociraptor, and the fucking Edward Scissorhandosaurus magically exist here. Because as it appears to me, no one attached to this project learned anything from the fictional characters or other filmmakers, so things and dinosaurs are thrown at the screen quickly, becoming white noise. Which compounds how stupid the characters, as well as animals, are when they do things they wouldn't or shouldn't. Take all those who stand around and do nothing while dinosaurs stomp through town. Some moron on a scooter casually rides by a Carnotaurus when he decides to look backwards just to be chomped by the Allosaurus to his immediate left. Or how about Owen's stupid Dora the Explorer move? He tries this on all kinds of dinosaurs, and it's as out of place as Dr. McAllister's sign language in Deep Blue Sea. Why are these monsters not eating Owen? Even Dr. Grant and Clone Girl do it too, and it's as cringe as it sounds, because dinosaurs only do things when the plot tells them to. Remember how a single raptor at the beginning of the first film was horrifying? Well, now the world's largest land carnivore follows people around like a retarded puppy because it couldn't be arsed to put in any effort at all, like trying to motivate Lena Dunham to lose weight. Even the overarching message of the movie fails as it spins on a dime. We must learn to live with our mistakes and coexist on this planet without harm to those who don't deserve it. But we should also totally eradicate an entire species of prehistoric locusts because that's just too far. So the question becomes, what does the movie get right? The answer? Very little, like the tech kid who screamed like a banshee stubbed her toe. Well, he doesn't raise his voice past a shout. Or the vet that didn't know shit about dinosaurs? Well, she doesn't get to talk much, thankfully. And their combined screen time is less than 10 minutes. Even Blue receives this treatment because no one should ever have cared about this glorified turkey. You know what? Good job, Hollywood. I'm glad you actually listened for once.
Now why the fuck didn't you try to fix anything else we pointed out? I can't believe you idiots actually used the dinosaur laser tag idea in this film. It doesn't help the Atrociraptors chase characters with plot armor thicker than Amy Schumer, because it does prove the point that dinosaurs would be shit in a war. And the only reason that chase scene happens is because the people with firearms not five feet in front of the Atrociraptors forgot how guns work, like when the Indominus Rex stood in front of Owen and crew with an RPG. And you have Owen on a dirt bike racing at 35, 45 miles an hour or so, with the Atrociraptors in lockstep, but Claire proves to be faster than fucking Lion-O because she can apparently outpace not only the Tyrannosaur in heels, but also an Atrociraptor in boots? And cherry on top, possibly the worst retcon of it all, is that you made Clone Girl practically the next messiah because her fucking DNA can possibly cure any and all diseases? Why was this even written? Do you not comprehend how this destroys this trilogy at large, and if not, the entirety of the series? Just a simple example, if Dr. Wu already knew about Clone Girl and her mom who didn't die in a car accident because now she was the bestest scientist ever and almost single-handedly made the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park and gave birth to Clone Girl asexually, <laughs> then he would have gone to her instead of wasting his time with Masrani. I know it's been a while since I last saw Fallen Kingdom, and even longer since I watched Jurassic World, however, it is abundantly clear the Jurassic World trilogy has almost perfectly mirrored the Star Wars sequel trilogy, beginning with more nostalgia dangling than a janitor's key ring that made a shit zillion dollars, followed by the extremely divisive and ultimately accepted to be absolute trash and world-breaking sequel, and finally the piss-poor conclusion with the extra added weight of attempting to correct the prior film's mistakes. Oh, for three, the Jurassic World trilogy has struck out and hopefully this is the movie that renders this franchise extinct. It's amazing that dinosaurs like these have aged so poorly in such a short amount of time, while others like Tom Cruise and Jennifer Connelly still look great in Top Gun Maverick, which has all the fun and excitement the Jurassic franchise never could regain. So go check out my review of that fun time to get the taste of this one big pile of shit out of your mouth, and subscribe to join my kingdom.